Welcome back to the Give Me Space podcast with me, Henry Perriton. This is a podcast about anything you can think of from space, the planets, the solar system, the galaxies and the universe. On the last episode, we talked about our nearest neighbour, Mars. On this episode, we are going to continue our journey through the solar system and away from the sun to the biggest planet in our solar system. Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant that orbits the sun every 12 years. It is the fifth planet from the sun and is twice as big as all the other planets combined. Jupiter is so big and has so much mass that it affects the orbit of other planets around the Sun. But even though Jupiter is massive, it is nowhere near the size of our Sun. Over 1,000 Jupiters could fit within the Sun. Jupiter may be much smaller than the Sun, but it still plays an important role in the solar system because it pulls in rogue asteroids and comets that come nearby, making life safer on Earth. For this reason, Jupiter has been called the vacuum cleaner of the solar system. Jupiter is famous for its great red spot, a huge storm on its atmosphere that has been raging for at least 350 years. This is no ordinary storm. It is a high pressure storm that is three times the size of Earth. The spacecraft Juno flew within 8,000 kilometers of the surface of Jupiter in 2017 and took amazing photos of the storm. These photos revealed that the red color of Jupiter's storm is the result of sunlight reacting with chemicals in the highest clouds, some of which sit 8 kilometers above the cloud tops of the rest of the planet. You don't think of Jupiter having rings, but All the outer planets beyond the asteroid belt have rings, including Jupiter, but only Saturn's rings are visible from Earth using a normal light telescope. Jupiter's rings are formed by dust that orbits the planet along with its many outer moons. Jupiter was named by the Roman gods after the king of the Roman gods, but it was Galileo Galilei in 1610 who first observed Jupiter through a telescope and named four of its moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. In the 400 years since their discovery, we have learned a lot about Jupiter and its moons, especially in the last 70 years since humans invented space flight. The first space flight to Jupiter was around 50 years ago. The Pioneer 10 spacecraft passed close to Jupiter in 1973 and the next Pioneer craft, called Pioneer 11, passed Jupiter the following year. Voyager 1 and 2 were launched in 1977 and flew past Jupiter in 1979, taking more than 50,000 photos. In December 1995, the Galileo became the first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter and subsequent missions to Jupiter included Ulysses, Cassini Hydrons, New Horizons and Juno. Jupiter is a long way from Earth. Because Jupiter and Earth are both orbiting the Sun and they take different times to orbit the Sun, the distance between the two planets varies. At its closest, Jupiter is 600 million kilometers from Earth, but at its furthest, it is around 970 million kilometers away. It would take around nine years with current technology to travel to Jupiter. According to NASA, humans may visit Jupiter and its moons by the year 2070, but visiting and orbiting Jupiter is one thing, landing on Jupiter is another matter. There's not really a surface to land on. Jupiter is made of hydrogen gas and the closer you get to the center of Jupiter, the more solid that gas becomes. 
On the surface of Jupiter, the atmosphere is around 2.5 times the pressure on Earth. But in the most innermost layers of Jupiter, the pressure is around 2 million times the pressure experienced on Earth. Jupiter also generates belts of lethal radiation. So, humans will never land on Jupiter because there's no surface to land on and the environment is not suitable for human life. But, we may be able to land on the moons of Jupiter, some of which may be similar to Earth. Jupiter is so large that it has attracted and trapped over 70 moons. The four Galilean moons, first discovered by Galileo in 1610, are all very different and very interesting. The most distant moon is Callisto, also known as Jupiter 4. By comparison, the diameter of Callisto is about 2,400 kilometers, compared to the 12,000 kilometers for Earth. This icy and rocky moon is the most cratered object in the solar system. Poor old Callisto has been hammered by meteorites over many millions of years. Some of the craters may be 4 billion years old. Callisto is also known as the dead moon because no geological activity such as volcanoes and tectonic plate movement has been found on it. It has no magnetosphere, which means it most likely has a cool centre, which means it can never hold an atmosphere. Ganymede is the third closest moon to Jupiter and the biggest moon in the solar system. It is bigger than Mercury and Pluto and slightly smaller than Mars. If it wasn't a moon of Jupiter, it would be classified as a planet. Unlike Callisto, Ganymede has an magnetosphere, meaning that it could hold a stable atmosphere, and below its icy surface it likely has to be an ocean that holds three times the volume of water than Earth. Ganymede is like a scene from a science fiction movie. It has volcanoes that shoot slushy ice across its surface, which freezes into odd-shaped glaciers. Europa is the second closest moon to Jupiter and the smallest Galilean moon. It also contains a lot of water. Many missions to the moons of Jupiter have observed a crust of ice over Europa that is broken into sheets, just like the continent on Earth. Just like on Ganymede, an ocean of salt water lies beneath the icy surface and this water runs out of cracks in between the icy continents and then freezes, creating new shapes across its surface. Scientists believe that there's twice as much water underneath the surface of Europa than on the whole of planet Earth and that Europa is the most likely place in the solar system to find life outside of planet Earth. Because Europa is closer to Jupiter, it is kept warm by Jupiter's radiation and Europa is geologically active with a hot mantle inside it. The water of Europa is in direct contact with this mantle, which keeps it warm. These conditions are all helpful for the development of life. Within my lifetime, humans could visit Europa and then we will know for sure if life exists outside planet Earth. Io is approximately the same size as our moon and is the closest moon to Jupiter. Io is the most geologically active surface of the solar system. Io is very geologically active because of the strong gravitational forces of Jupiter and the other Galilean moons that cause enormous pressure and therefore heat inside it. Io has almost 500 volcanoes across its surface and is very colourful because of the minerals that are sent to the surface via these volcanoes. Because of the low gravitational forces of the moon itself, when volcanoes erupt, they can throw volcanic material many hundreds of kilometers into space. Landing on the surface of Io would be very difficult and probably impossible because of the volcanic activity and radiation. The radiation would kill a person within hours. Is Jupiter just a sun that failed to shine? Some people have referred to Jupiter as a failed star because it is made of hydrogen gas, just like the other stars. 
but it is probably not an accurate description. Jupiter is only 1.1% the mass of our Sun, so it is nowhere near the mass and internal pressure of a star that is needed to create nuclear fusion. For more on how stars create heat, you can see my episode, Where Does the Sun Get Its Energy From? Jupiter has north and south poles and a magnetosphere, just like Earth's. Solar radiation reacts within the atmosphere at the poles and creates a glow called an aurora, just like the aurora australis and aurora borealis on Earth. On the next episode on the Gimme Space podcast, we are continuing our journey through the solar system towards the next gas giant, Saturn. Until next time, Gimme Space! Gimme Space!